Hey, what's going on guys? Colin here with Red Beans and Dice, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite characters from one of my favorite games. It's going to be the Scout from Nemesis, made by Awaken Realms. So let's get into it. We're going to check out the quest items, the cards, the starting weapon that the Scout is going to get, and then her beginning trait. So let's check out the monitor scanner up here. So the monitor scanner is going to make you discard an energy charge to activate this item. Now, energy charges are great. They can open or close doors or refill your energy weapon. I don't like the fact that you have to get rid of an energy charge for this weapon, but at the same time, check this out. It is not a one-use card. You can use it as many times, but only once per noise roll. And you're going to have to use a hand spot, which can be problematic if you have a objective that is like grab an egg or grab a body and exit on a escape pod or something like that it can become a little troublesome if you need that hand spot to pick up something but you're going to be able to discard one action card from your hand to reroll the result of a noise roll that's absolutely amazing so many of the times when i'm trying to get into a hibernation chamber or an escape pod you have to make a, ro a noise roll and if you botch that, I mean, it, you know, it clears out all the noise in the neighboring rooms, but at the same time, there's an intruder in your room and you cannot perform the room action. So this is an amazing card. I really like it. Uh, you know, I don't like that you have to discard an inter energy charge to activate it, but at the same time, this is, I think it's worth it. Next up, we have the security key, which you're going to be able to activate this in the cockpit. So that's where you're going to have the coordinates and all that good stuff and the destination. And then this is going to be a one use only card, um, not in combat. And you're going to choose one room and close the doors to uh, open, close any doors in the corridors uh, connected to this room. You may choose which doors to close and which to open. So this would be possibly a good card if you were trying to kill somebody. You could lock him in a room either with the queen or the or it's on fire or something undesirable or if they're trying to move into the same room with you to do something, uh, you know, kind of perform some sort of shenanigans, then you can block them from that. Now, you know, I mean, it's a good card, but so very often, often I found out that with the objectives, usually people don't try to actually take out the other player because... There's, uh, you know, there is a good possibility they could just die on their own, but aggressively following someone around and trying to sabotage them isn't that fun. And actually, it can be very hard, especially if they just kind of go before you and then run off the board in some weird uh, direction that you necessarily don't want to go. So there's that. We'll put it back down. And then let's get into some of the cards. Now, there's going to be a couple basic cards like rest and uh, search that I left out here because those are just common cards that everybody has. And I hope that the sleeves don't cause too much of a problem here with the glare. I thought about taking them out, but I think they should be fine. So let's start off with one of my favorite cards. I think this card might be one of the best ones in the game. So you're going to be paying this card plus another one to perform the cost, which means that you just don't make a noise roll when you move into the room next to you. You know, oh my gosh, that is just, I mean, the whole game is just about putting noise and having that noise devastate you. And if you can take this and move into the hibernation chamber or move into a room that's, say, full of noise or a room with escape pod and there's no noise around you, you've essentially set yourself up for a, a good way to get in the escape pod and not have an intruder spawned on you. So I absolutely love this card. I... I thought it was a little weak when I first started out, but as I went on and on and have played this character about five or six times, this card is just absolutely amazing. If I draw this in my beginning hand or at a crucial point where I'm neck deep in intruders, it really gets me out of trouble. Uh, basic repairs is, um, you know, it's not, it's nothing too crazy. It's nothing too good. Uh, discard a malfunction marker in your room. Um, a lot of the characters have this, so it's nothing special, but I thought I'd just put it in there because I don't believe that all the characters have this. I could be wrong, but, um, you know, it's nothing great. Break, repair the engine uh, in the engine room you're in is pretty good, but, you know, I found that most people are usually trying to escape through the evacuation pods, uh, the escape pods. So I very rarely use the hibernation chamber just because you have to have two of the three engines working and then you got to make sure it's not going to deep space or going to go somewhere funky like Mars. You got to have it to Earth. There's just a lot of 
hoops to jump through in order to get the ship somewhere. And usually somebody's trying to blow it up anyway. So <laughs> we'll put that over to the side. This card is absolutely amazing. I love Adrenaline. This is uh, along with, what is that called? Rent, uh, reconnaissance. This is easily one of my favorite cards, probably tied with Reconnaissance. So it just gives you so much to do. I mean, if you're there's an intruder on the board, you're either shooting it or running away from it. This allows you to add an extra action card, whether you're shooting or performing an escape movement. I mean, that is awesome. So that will just give you basically another action, and you can perform a escape movement and then draw another card like it didn't even happen. You'll still have to roll for noise um, if you do the escape movement. Um, and then take an intruder attack, uh, attack of opportunity, obviously, but I really like this card. Over here we have Suppressing Fire, which I absolutely adore. This card got me out of so many tough times. I was playing a co-op mission, and I had a character that was had an egg and had to escape on a uh, escape pod. And they were in a room with an intruder with me. I just discarded a um, an ammo from my gun and had him move to the next room and got him out of there without uh, triggering an intruder attack. And I think I actually had a character in the room next to them, so they didn't even have to roll for noise. And we got him on the escape pod and uh, got him out of there and won the game. And, you know, maybe the intruder attack that they would have had to trigger if they didn't have, if they didn't have this card on their turn would have killed him or given him a contamination card that would have gotten him later. Really good card. Love it. Really got me out of a tough time there. And for zero cost, just playing the card itself, it's not bad at all. And you can also move yourself, obviously. It says it right there. Scavenging is great. So I've had a couple times, I know there's two search cards in everybody's deck, but I've had a couple times where, you know, I just wanted to stay in the same room and I, I've already used my search cards. You can go ahead and use this. It's a little pricey. It costs this card and another one. So... Uh, you know, and then if you really need some items, you can go ahead and get it. If the counter is down to zero, you can still search that item. And then I really like using this if ever a, a white or gray location is out because her trait actually over here gives you the ability to perform a search action in any white room, uh, draw one card from each item deck. So you can go ahead and use this on a depleted room and you can get three cards, one from each of the decks and go from there. It's just a great ability to have to get extra items and possibly get a gun, some duct tape, energy charge, anything that you need. Put that right over there. That's it for the cards. And then her basic starting out rifle is, well, I said it before, it's basic, okay? It's nothing too special, but at the same time, I'm not a big fan of some of those weapons like the shotgun that do a lot of damage. They do an extra damage if you hit, I believe, but there's only two shots. I got a, uh, what was I, I was the pilot the other time, or the engineer, I, or the mechanic, I can't remember, and they have the shotgun, which gives you two shots per the gun. If you miss on those, you're out. You have to go ahead and try to find an energy charge, and then so very often, the uh, wounds that's going to be doing, that you're going to be trying to do to an intruder, they usually take four, five, or even sometimes six, so you really have to kind of get lucky, and then, I, I, you know, I just like the ability to have more ammo in your weapon, even though it doesn't give any benefits, like the soldier uh, starting assault rifle or the or the shotguns do, That I, like I was saying, it's still a very good weapon. I really like it. The four ammo is great. You know, if you get an energy charge or energy cell, then it's going to be an extra eight shots that you can potentially put onto an intruder. Maybe one time they'll get a card and run away from it. But it's just, I don't like the low ammo count cards. They just do not work for me. And then up here, we have the trait, which I showed you guys a little bit before. So this is going to let you draw one card from each of the item decks. The red, green, yellow. Red is going to be more guns, ammo. Green is going to be healing, healing. Yellow is going to be more of the crafting items, duct tape. Uh, I think uh, chemicals are in there. So yeah, you get basically three options from three different decks and... Um, yeah, really good card, really good card, or really good trait, excuse me, and it just lets you get uh, more options, and then you get to kind of skim the options from each one of the decks, very good. Some of the other character traits that I'm going to get into later in other videos really haven't impressed me, uh, they just seem like, what's the purpose of this, but this is one that I actively use 
about, mm, I'd say almost every game. I use that almost every game. Well, that's it for my breakdown of the Scout from Nemesis by Awakened Realms. I hope you enjoyed my video. Stay tuned because I'm going to be doing this for all the other Nemesis characters. I really hope you liked my video. And if there was something that I left out about the Scout that you liked or you didn't like, hit it up down in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I love you. Stay safe, happy, healthy. See you later.